Hi, I am Sivam Krish. I will explain in this video how to install and use Geneform with Grasshopper. First, you go to this website, which is www.genoform.com. Then you go to the software page, and there you are. You've got the download button there. So click download, and it starts downloading the software for you. Okay, you can then click setup and it will start installing Geneform. So it will ask you what you want to install and then it will ask you permission to allow access and then it will complain saying that there's no CAD. Just click OK to ignore. All right, Geneform is now set up. The next thing you've got to do is to install the Rhino components with into the components directory of Rhino which you normally find under program files, Rhino, plugin, and you go to Grasshopper. And you find the Grasshopper components there. And all you need to do is to just drag it and drop. You're now ready to go. So now that we have installed Geneform, we will create a simple generative model for a box. So let's start Rhino first. So we've got Rhino, let's start Grasshopper. Now when you open up Grasshopper, you will see something different here, and that's Geneform in the extras part. So you will see three types of components. This is your main Geneform component, which talks to your design data. And these are filters and these are slider bars. Now let's make a simple box. So we will create a vector point by connecting three values to it or sliders to it. Now remember these sliders are just like the Geneform sliders, but they are special in the sense that they help you to generate stuff. So here we go. We connect them to X, Y, and Z. Let's get another point component here. And let's create a box with it. So that goes there. Since we have not filled anything here, that's just a zero, zero point. When you collect it, you will see, should see a box. Oh, before that, we need to put in some values here. These are essentially the X, Y, and Z values. And there you go. So we can see this box now. Now, this box is very simple. We It's, it's controlled by the sliders um, exactly the way a normal Gen um, graphs of a slider works. Right. Now let's run Geneform. Okay, I've forgotten something. We got to actually save this file first before we start Geneform because Geneform looks for this file. So let's call it um, box. We need to first save it because Geneform looks for a saved file. Okay, we now have Geneform launched. You can see that Geneform just takes that picture and puts it here. And you have the design data here. You can see it's 4.3, 4. These are the three parameters here, are here. And then it has a minimum and maximum value this minimum and maximum value is set by this bar here. We call this the, the, the wild bar. If you want to make your designs wild, you, you press this. So you can see as you change this, it changes the range within which the design will be generated. So if you don't want to see the rest, you can just close it or you can keep it open. All right, now to generate, you have to do something very simple. You have to just click 
this button called generate. So there you are. We saw five designs being generated. You can see design four, design three, design two, design one. Have a look at this. So there we are. These are the five designs. Right? So it is that simple. That is how you generate designs from Grasso. Okay, now let's look at some of the more advanced features. Um, so let me bring up a new design. But first let's close Geneform because every time you load a design, Geneform has to read the values of it. So you really need to close the design and close Geneform, close the design and open a new document. Okay, so let's look. Okay, now let's look at a, a design of a vase. Um, now here we have a design that is controlled by both Geneform slider bars and grasshopper slider bars. The grasshopper slider bars control the vertical dimensions and the Geneform slider bars control the horizontal dimensions or about R values of this design. So uh, let's try and see what happens when we generate these values. What you also find here is a filter. Now we'll explain how the filter works. But what we are doing here is we are finding the area here using an area value and pumping it onto the filter. So Geneform would now have a sense of the area and can filter them by areas as well. All right, let's run Geneform. Right. Now I want to demonstrate what happens when you change this. Now let's initially start with a very conservative variation, maybe about 10% variations. Okay. There you are. Can you see those designs are not that very? They're about really about ten percent. Now let's see what happens when we yank this up. Look at that. Do you see the designs get quite creative? Right now, if this is not wild enough, you can always go here and set it to wilder and see what happens. Then it becomes totally ridiculous. You really don't want to go. There. So let's set it up here. Just to demonstrate that Geneform allows you to control the creative range of, of exploration. Now, you can always go here and see the designs. You've got the data here. You can also look at the filters. The filters allow you to filter the designs according to various things. For example, in this one we've got area. You can have a look at the filter values. You can see the filter values come up here, which is the area of the design. And you can then filter it for about a 7% variation. And what you will find here is those filters, some of those have failed the variation that gone beyond the limit, right? You also have this switch called like, dislike, and as you navigate these things, you can give it a thumbs down if you don't like it. And, you know, so this is another way of, of, of filtering the designs, which essentially allows you to say whether you like or dislike the designs. You can see that's the one that you didn't like. And totally, this will, then pass only the designs that pass through all the filters, including your likes and dislikes. So that's how it works.